In this video you will learn what the terms conductance and also resistance mean and why they are the connection between the parameters current and voltage in an electric circuit. You will learn why resistance depends on the cross section and length of a conductor, let's say a copper wire, and also what the term conductivity means in this context. And you will also see what a typical resistor looks like in actual electronics. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer and here we go. Now let's start with a broad definition of the term resistance taken from a German dictionary and it says there that resistance describes or is the property of certain substances, for example copper, to inhibit the flow of electric current. So electric current, the flow of electrons through a conductor is, um, is made harder by um, the material properties and this is described by a set of parameters which in summary um, are called resistance. And in order to dig deeper, or before we dig deeper, let's quickly recap some of the facts which we already have learned in previous videos and which we will need in this video in order to understand the concept of resistance. The first is the electrical conductivity sigma describes a quantity which is used to indicate the ability of a material to conduct the electric current. In the previous video we have deeply looked into this concept of electrical conductivity and also into the parameters out of which it is assembled. And if you haven't seen this video up until now, I recommend that you watch it in order to understand what's what's coming now. Also, second, uh, secondly, um, it's defined by the this conductivity is defined by the elementary charge, the charge carrier density, and the electron mobility. These are the parameters which make up the electrical conductivity. And the geometry of the conductor is irrelevant in the definition of conductivity. Up until now, we have only looked at these parameters in order to describe the properties of a certain material, but we have not yet considered the shape of the material. For example, if we consider a copper wire, this is very a very thin and long cylinder, a cylindrical shape, and by including the geometric properties, for example, cross-section area and length, uh, and by combining it with the conductivity sigma, we arrive at the definition of resistance. And this is the aim of this video here, to, um, to add to our concept of conductivity the geometrical properties of the material which we want to observe. And here in this equation you can already see how this can be done. If we um, take the equation which we have um, shown n numerous times before, uh, the relationship between the current I on the left side and the voltage U on the right side, um, we have subsumized uh, several parameters in this concept of conductivity here in the green circle, which is represented in this uh, little um, figure here um, by the green area of this um, of this conductor, and it's it's it uh, it's about the material parameters of the material we are looking. It's going to be a difference if we have a zinc, an aluminum or a copper wire and this difference in material properties is um, represented by the concept of conductivity. And now we add to this, uh, to this uh, concept the um, cross-section area A of the conductor and also the length of the conductor. And these parameters combined, they help us get closer to this definition of Ohm's law where we want to arrive at in the long run. But before we get there, let's introduce the concept of conductance. It's an expression which is very uh, similar to the concept of conductivity, um, but it's uh, something different because it includes uh, conductivity and adds to, um, adds to it um, the material properties of the conductor. So these three parameters combined, cross-section area, cross area A divided by the length L multiplied with the conductivity of the respective material, this is what we call conductance G. And the conductance G is multiplied with a voltage. So we now have a very simple relationship between the current and the voltage. We simply need to multiply voltage by G and what we get is the current I. This already sounds very um, close uh, to what you will surely have heard of uh, as, uh, as Ohm's law. And on the right hand side you can see two um, examples. We have a very thick and short conductor which is uh, denoted by G1 and we have a very thin and long uh, conductor G2 and the conductivity of the first conductor G1 is obviously greater than uh, of the second conductor which you can readily um, derive, deduce from this, from this small equation here on the, on the left side. 
And the unit in which we measure the conductivity, uh, the conductance G is the Siemens and we abbreviate it uh, with the letter S. This is a, a very famous German engineer, also a famous German company, which is named after, uh, after Werner von Siemens, which, uh, after which this unit of conductance was named uh, many, many decades ago. And the conductivity indicates how well a conductor conducts the electric current. This is a very important um, idea here. We, we express by using the expression of conductance, we express how well a conductor conducts electric current. The greater G, the greater is going to be the current. And now we can define the concept of resistance. We have already seen that conductance uh, describes how well a material conducts electricity, but in practice, in the vast majority of applications which we have, um, people prefer to express how poorly a material conducts electricity. That's how it has evolved over the history of electronics and electricity um, by using uh, this concept of resistance, we express how poorly a material conducts electricity. And the uh, concept of a resist resistance can be defined very quickly. We simply need to compute the reciprocal value of the conductance G, and then we get the, uh, the resistance, which you can see in this very simple relationship here. The resistance R is the inverse of the conductance G. And if we look at the same bodies, which we have observed on the previous slide, um, a thick and short one, a long and thin one, we can now clearly see that the resistance of the first one is smaller because it has more area through which the electrons can flow and uh, less length over which um, resistance is opposed to the flow of electrons and then the second resistor here which is why its resistance value is larger. And the unit of resistance is uh, the ohm which is expressed by the letter omega and ohm is also uh, one of the famous names from, from the world of electricity and uh, ohm conducted some very very famous experiment experiments and of course he is the uh, namesake of the famous Ohm's law which we will address in a very short time in one of the next videos. But before we get to the definition of Ohm's law let's first look at resistors which are a component in electronics uh, in which the idea of resistance and cross-section area and length and electron mobility or conductivity um, is combined into a very simple part here. The resistor in general is a component in electronics uh, in which uh, whose main aim is to reduce the kinetic energy of the moving electrons and convert this kinetic energy into heat which is dissipated over the resistor housing. And depending on the design of the resistor uh, we can either increase or decrease the cross-section area, we can increase or decrease the length of the resistor um, inside the housing. There are various ways to do so and we will look more deeply into differences between various types of resistors in the chapter on electronics components in a few uh, in, in one of the upcoming videos but for now we only want to get a broad idea of what a resistor is about. And by adjusting these values very carefully, cross-section area, length, connectivity, we can achieve a very specific resistance value. And here you can see a schematic of a resistor, uh, which is hugely magnified here. Um, you can see the, uh, the coating, which has these colored rings, which uh, represent the value of the resistor. You can see it uh, more, clearly, more clearly here on the right-hand side. And this color code is used because it's very hard, or in, in um, years past, it was very hard to print uh, the numerical value of a resistor onto such a small housing, which is why people used a color code in order to express the value of the resistor. And inside we have the connection wires, which are uh, directing the flow of currents into the resistor. And then we get, in this case, it's a coal, a coal resistor. We have the coal layer, uh, which, uh, which influences the resistance by the concept of um, conductivity shaping or by, 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 by carefully shaping the conductivity of the material and um, this is how we achieve the specific resistance value of this, of this resistor here. And the value of a resistor can simply be measured by using a multimeter or by looking up uh, the color code in a specific table. And the major idea here of this video is not 
uh, to give you a very exhaustive picture of the um, resistors in electronics, but um, rather express this concept of this fundamental idea of resistance and how we can arrive at this concept of resistance by first looking at the conductivity, then at the conductance, and then at the resistance of a certain material. And all is about, uh, it's all about connecting the two primary forces or driving forces in electronics, which are current flow and, and, um, and voltage. And now we have uh, come from a very lengthy equation, which we have reduced further and further and further. And now we have a very simple relationship between the two, which is defined by the current flow, the voltage and the resistance. And this is basically uh, all we need to understand Ohm's law in the upcoming video. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos which you want me to make, please also leave a comment here. I wish you a nice day now, all the best and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.